So we will start with uh, the first uh, lecture and the <coughs> so group theory is uh, very useful in physics it's a, it's a useful tool so we will try to see in this set of lectures in 3 days what are the basic definitions rules techniques and how they can be applied in uh, different branches of physics group theory is a subject which deals with uh, groups which are set of transformations with some invariance properties for example we were just uh, uh, seeing in the morning if you look at today's date 15515 if you write it like that if you make a transformation of year to date the date remains invariant so if you change year to date date to year it is still 15515 so essentially transformations which will leave some physical process invariant in physics generally we describe a system by specifying its hamiltonian so if you make a transformation which does not change the hamiltonian we say that this particular system has got an invariance under such a transformation so hamiltonian will remain same the transformation may be some kind of a rotation or a reflection or it can be uh, a kind of a phase change so whatever transformation that you make if the hamiltonian does not change then we say that the system has got such an invariance you make a translation make a rotation or you make a phase change local phase changes such are called gauge transformations so you have a, a series of such transformations that you can make and put them all together as a set transformation 1 transformation 2 3 etc all those set of transformations will actually form a group so that is called a symmetry group okay so let us uh, look at uh, these things a little more carefully and in detail so let me start with the definition of a group we have a set a set g and a binary composition law or composition rule a binary composition i will denote it as a circle which i will denote it as g comma circle is called a group if and only if the following axioms are satisfied Is the font size okay? Can you read? Lata teacher, can you read? Yes. Readable to the end? <coughs> okay. What are the axioms? First axiom is closure. So, G 
should be closed under under this operation under this binary operation o what does it mean it means for any two elements gi comma gj belonging to this g gi composed with gj the binary composition is that is a rule by which we can compose two elements of the group so this result of this composition should also be in g what does it mean it means you take any two elements of the group you compose them then you cannot generate an element which is outside g every element result of the composition of every two elements will belong to the same set so it is closed you cannot go out of the group that is the closure property second property is called associative property or simply call it as associativity what is the meaning of associativity for any triplet of elements for any gi comma gj comma gk in g gi composed of the result of composition of gj gk is same as the result of composition of gi gj composed with gk that means the order in which you compose them is not important this is called associativity third property can you see the bottom third property that there should exist an element called identity existence of identity that means there should exist an element an element e in g such that e composed with gi or gi composed with e should be gi and this should be true for all gi in g such an identity element should exist in the group fourth fourth axiom is existence of of inverse to each element which means for all gi in g there should exist a gi inverse in g such that gi composed with gi inverse is same as gi inverse composed with gi this is equal to identity this is for every element there should exist an inverse so if any set with a binary composition is satisfying these four axioms then we will call that a group so this is the definition of a group in addition
if for any g i comma g j belonging to g g i composed with g j is equal to g j composed with g i then the group is called an abelian group. Then the group is called an abelian group. So, if you have up to 1 to 4, it is group. If you have this also, it is an abelian group. Yeah. Yes. So, we have discussed this, uh, we have defined this in the linear vector space. So, if I have to give an example, since we did linear vector space in uh, one of our previous workshops at uh, St. Thomas College Pala, any set of vectors, if you define V as a set of vectors, And this, so this G, I will call it as V. And this binary composition, I will call it as vector addition. Vector addition. Now, if you consider V plus, that is set of vectors with vector addition, is always an abelian group. All these axioms will be satisfied for this. So, when we defined vector space, we first defined these things with vector addition and if you can recall, I think I wrote there that V plus is an abelian group. Okay? So, this is the <coughs> example I am giving because we already studied it in the linear algebra course. So, V plus is an abelian group. So, V plus is an abelian group is necessary for V to be a vector space, but it is not sufficient because in vector space in addition to set of vectors, you should also have a set of scalars and there is another operation called scalar multiplication. So, a vector space together with this vector addition and another field of scalars and scalar multiplication, it should satisfy a few more axioms with the scalar multiplication like it should be closed under scalar multiplication and then there should be a distributive property. If that all satisfies, then it will become a vector space. But for a set of vectors to become a vector space with respect to vector addition, it should be an abelian group. Okay? So, these are the axioms that require to be satisfied for some algebraic structure. We call this an algebraic structure. G with a binary operation is an algebraic structure. For this structure to become a group, it needs to satisfy all this. Okay? Now, supposing if uh, some structure is satisfying only these two properties, okay? then such a structure is called a semi-group. If it is satisfying only 1 and 2, it is called a semi-group. But if it is satisfying only 1, 2 and 3, then that is called a monoid. These are just names for they, they exist, so I am writing. And if it satisfies 1, 2, 3 and 4, it is called a group. And if you may want to call it as a 5, if it satisfies 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5, it is called an abelian group. 
okay so that is the definition of a group okay now let us ask uh, a question that suppose if i have a set with only one element a singleton set under what condition it will become a group if i have only one element singleton set under what condition it becomes a group should be an identity because identity should exist if you have only one element that should be identity now if that's an identity element you can verify that all the axioms will be satisfied what is the inverse of an identity same the same element because e times e will be e so if you if you ask this question if so let us let us call that as so this as example 1 so let's call example 2 as a singleton set a is a group if and only if a is equal to identity suppose if we have a set a set 